All right, are we live? I believe so. Everything okay. looks on green over here. All right, well, welcome to the BDSM podcast. All the people, the foodies, the smokes, all those guys. Uh, I am Professor Porkcoin, and I'm here with my awesome co-host, the Me Viking. And uh, we are continuing our journey across the United States, and today we are getting to Hawaii. Hey, yeah, buddy. <laughs> uh I, I always think of crank yankers you remember that show i mean i do but that's not what comes to my mind when i think of hawaii oh i always think of hawaii because the guy's like i'm going to hawaii yay no i never said i had a good thought that came into my mind when i said hawaii because i always think of cult 45 and two zigzags <laughs> now if you know that song at all <laughs> yeah <laughs> met this chick from hawaii <laughs> <laughs> yeah you shouldn't be watching this if you're uh under the age of 18 to 21 and uh i'm not going to claim any responsibility if i brought up some you know memories and you get cult 45 stuck in your head for a while yeah that's true well uh i guess we need to continue on with what we're doing so uh what is the safe word for today <laughs> You have any ideas? Uh, d- dolphin. Dolphins. <laughs> okay, dolphins can work. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you kind of see them when you're out there, and, you know, if you're actually getting it on with someone, dolphins is something that you would not say. So, yeah, yeah okay. Uh, cool. Well, you got anything in your cup today? Not in the cup, because I prefer this in the bottle. Um, and in true meat viking fashion, today I'm going to slay a dragon. I've got good old dragon's milk. Oh, shit. Dragon's milk. Okay. Yeah, one of my favorite beers. Um, double bur- double bourbon barrel aged stout. Um, comes from Michigan, so it's relatively local here. But it's an 11% ABV and you know 30 ibus and you can find it year round where i'm at it's pricey but i picked this up when i was getting ready to uh, go to chicago that way i would spend money in the hotel drinking my own beer instead of getting charged you know a newborn child for a drink yeah those those little bars in the in the hotel room man you get a a a shot of booze and it's like eight bucks shit <laughs> maybe more ordered, than that i ordered a whiskey sour from our hotel 36 dollars 36 dollars what the hell for a whiskey sour was this in like room service or was this at the hotel bar hotel bar oh my god i would have just been like what's on tap yeah <laughs> well you know i uh because there's not a whole lot that goes into a whiskey sour Super simple drink. So, you know, I was thinking 12, no, 15. $12. Yeah. No. So, you got hosed, man. Yeah, I did. <laughs> yeah, I did. <laughs> well, I am continuing on with the Great Lake stuff. Uh, I have another one of the porters. So, mm-hmm. I'm going to wind up going with that one. Uh, I, I have others too. Yeah, Edmund Fitzgerald. I have other ones too. I have their um, their lager or their ale. It, it came in the variety pack, so those will be popping up, I'm sure, if yeah. I don't uh, if I don't drink them beforehand. Oh, I know. But but uh, all right, man. So Hawaii, you've never been, have you? No, but my um my mother and stepdad go. Every year to every other year for the past five or six years because he likes to run um, Ironmans. And apparently, Hawaii yeah, has I a remember. really big Ironman every year. Oh, I thought I, I lost your audio there for a second. I was just listening. Yeah, but no, so they uh, they do the Ironman, the triathlons there every year, and then they spend like a week and a half on vacation on the island. So. That's- that's crazy. In fact, um, the last time they were there, which I think was only a couple of months ago, they had sent me uh, pictures of them getting shaved ice from Hawaii. Because uh, if you guys no. go back, 
a few years uh, or a few episodes ago, um, we did an episode on shaved ice, and that is super popular in the Hawaiian area. Yeah, and uh, you know, I didn't think we were going to talk about it because we uh, we kind of talked about it before. But I mean, I still would like to give that a try and kind of see the difference between their shaved ice versus you know stuff here in the mainland. Yeah, <clears throat> I, I almost feel like because of the previous episode where we talked about it, where it has more of the, uh, the ice cream style, like texture. Yep. You know, cause I've, I've had some shaved ice that has been pretty similar. There's a place about an hour North of where I live that does that style of shaved ice. So, but you got to think that it doesn't matter, man. I would have that if I'm looking at the beach, I'd probably even throw a little bit of some alcohol in that thing and make it, make it an alcoholic milkshake, shaved ice, whatever the hell you want to call it. Oh, dude, 100%. <laughs> but, yeah, you're right. It definitely is a, a, a pretty big popular thing there on the islands. So, well, that's pretty cool. Um, but I know one of the things that I have found, and I know that you even found it too, but one of the, the main local foods is, uh, is Spam. <laughs> Yeah, uh, and it's kind of interesting how it's a, a pretty big influence. You know, a lot of Asian cultures have spam as their thing, and it's really funny because you know my wife used to live in South Korea, and one of the funniest stories that she ever told me was when she was in the grocery store, and uh, there was this little kid that wanted a can of spam, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, the mom, the mom was telling him no. But he's just like, ah, spam out you say, oh, he was just screaming it in the, in the, the grocery store, basically saying, I want spam. Nice. And he's just going, spam <laughs> But the history behind a lot of that, though, is the fact that it's, uh, you know, they were trying to find things for our soldiers. Because uh, yep. I think spam was made in like 1915 or something like that. And uh, they're trying to find like a ration that doesn't need to be refrigerated and that could have a pretty good shelf life. Mm -hmm. And essentially while we were doing the whole war stuff, I mean, we, we basically sent all those over to our soldiers and they, they kind of integrated into, you know, that culture and just never left. Yep. And like when we say that spam sent a whole bunch over, I think we need to actually get some numbers here. And yeah, it's estimated 15 million cans to allied troops every week between 1941 and 1945. Um, and that's over a hundred million pounds of spam overseas. Um, though the name of spam is shortened of spiced ham, the army would actually refer to it as special army meat. And eventually these surpluses <laughs> that they had ended up making it to native diets throughout the Pacific. Um, and to this day, Hawaiians love Spam Mishimi, which is a sushi style of Spam, served with rice, seaweed. Um, they do a Spam fried rice, and then another popular one is Spam and eggs. Yeah, so the Masubi, though, is, uh, is kind of like, think of sushi. Yeah. You know, but what they do is they cook the Spam, mm -hmm. right, to get a nice little curve. On, on each side yep. and then they basically roll it like like a like a sushi roll but it's square though um because they have the seaweed and everything the nori and yep. you can either enjoy it you can you can do it hot or you can do it cold i mean i guess it depends but they also have a like a mayonnaise that they put on top of it too hmm. so uh it's really interesting i have not had one of those but if i was in hawaii or if i was somewhere i would definitely give that a try just to say that i had it because i mean you know spam when was the last time you had freaking spam it's been a minute but it's been a, a minute for me too yeah it's so popular in hawaii though that they've nicknamed it the hawaiian steak <laughs> so <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that just, oh, God, I, you know, everybody thinks spam. I also think of, uh, um, what the hell is the uh, the British comedy people? 
you know what I'm talking about. Um, man, once when I get it, I'll figure it out. It's got John Cleese. He's the uh, the search for the Holy Grail. Monty Python. Oh, there you go. okay. Took me a second. I figured it out. But they always had a thing where it was like, spam, 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 spam. Yeah, no. But, yeah, I think that would actually be a pretty good thing to, to have. Um, the other thing that I, I found too, and I, and I think I would want to try this is called the loco moco. Okay. And, uh, it's basically something that you would probably want to have after drinking the night before, just because it's burger patties, usually two of them. Mm -hmm. And they put, um, brown gravy all over it. So they let the gravy soak into the burger, and then it serves with rice too. So the rice kind of soaks up that, and then they put two eggs on top. And I, I feel like just eating that would be something that my drunk ass, hungover self would need in the morning. Just get all that greasy, soak up the alcohol style. Yeah, that reminds me of um, that diner you and I used to go to. Um, not the Chinese place, but the breakfast place. Yeah. And we got that, uh, it's like an open face omelet served in a bowl. It had like all sorts of stuff in it, but it was covered in gravy too. Yeah, didn't they have stuff served in skillets too? So, uh, every now and again, yeah. yeah. They had like a mix of stuff. So. But I definitely remember that. And I, I think this kind of goes along with the two. It's just something that you would crave. Mm-hmm. Just because it's got just all the greasy, you know, the gravy and the hamburger patties um, and the eggs. It's just something that I think I would feel a lot better eating afterwards. Now, I, if it was on the menu and I got done with like a hike or if we were at the beach or something all day and it was the only thing there, I mean, I would just be like, okay, let's do this. Yep. But I feel like there's other, other foods going along on this island or the island that would be way better to try after a hike or after, you know, trying to surf and hitting my ass on the coral reef. Yeah. Well, and like <laughs> to, uh, to follow both surfing and having the need for, you know, a hangover here, I think we should segue into one of the breweries that Hawaii has. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I decided to go with this one because I'm not the farthest point from Hawaii but I can get this beer even where I'm from. Um, it's from Kona Brewing Company. Have you ever seen any Kona Brewing? Uh, uh, I, I have. Okay. Um, they, they got a bunch of stuff. Light beer is not typically my thing. I'll admit this. Um, but they've got quite a selection. They've got everything from like pina colada styled drinks that are uh ale based mm. a pineapple pilsner um some of their more popular ones that you'll find are like their island hopper which is a 12 pack of seasonal beers that they have you get your big wave golden ale your longboard iron lager um and as well as the castaway ipa and the kua bay ipa or you can find the wave rider pack um, which has your big wave golden ale, your longboard iron longer, Kona light blonde ale. Um, it's limited availability in the States and mainland, but this comes in cans where the other island hopper comes in bottles. So now I've had their, um, Colada cream ale before. Um, the only issue I had with it was it had like um how do I describe this? You ever have coconut milk? Uh yes, I have. You know how it gives you like that weird mouth feel? Yeah. Yeah. It was like drinking that and then I'd get that mouth fill and I was like, well, this is a little awkward. I wasn't expecting this. Um but you know, they got a uh, quite a bit to go through here. Um, if you go with their website, you can also see that they have some seltzers now, which I don't think they had when I was looking up, uh, when I was looking for new beers to try. 
But they've got their tropical punch, which has pineapple, orange, cherry, grape, and tangerine. Um, something that I would try is the starfruit lime, which is a very citrus forward heavy one. They have a strawberry guava and a passion fruit orange guava. So all sorts of nice little things in here. Um, granted, like I said earlier, I do not prefer light beers, but there's still some in here I would give a shot, you know, if it was around. Yeah, that definitely sounds pretty good. Uh, going off of your brewery stuff or your, your beer there, they also have a, a rum company. And my friend was actually in Hawaii, I don't know, maybe in March, just for her brother's wedding. And she brought back some from Hawaii. And then I, I actually saw, saw it in the liquor store a couple of weeks back going, oh, well, you, I guess you didn't really have to do that. You could have just bought it right down the road. But it's uh, the Koala or the Koloa Rum Company, and they started in two thousand nine, so they're fairly new when it comes to rum. Um, but they do; they're trying to bring the spirit of Aloha to the world. And I had their dark rum, and what they do is they take the rainwater from one of the the local mountains and one of the mountain peaks, and they they filter it. So they use underground aquifers. <laughs> like, how dope is that to say you're going to get some of the purest water and we're going to make that into rum? I'm, so, oh, God, this would be going back probably about 15 episodes. Um, when I had that Hawaiian-style cigar that was a very earthy cigar because they grew the tobacco out of that lava rock. Yeah. So, um, and actually, well, no, there is a, um, I'll let you finish your rum story and then we'll head back to this pale ale that I found. Yeah, do it. So, I mean, they, they use the sugar cane and, and they use other rum ingredients. They throw in like coffee and there's chocolate. There's different types of rums that they, they do. But, uh, I, I feel it's kind of cool to, to kind of share that with the rest of the country. Now, obviously, they sell it a lot more in, like, Japan and New Zealand because they're closer. But um, still, for 2009, just starting out as a, as a new distillery on that, and they're distilling all these rums, like, I think that's a pretty cool process. And you can basically find it anywhere. So it's, it's K-O-L-O-A rum. Um, you know, where I'm at, I found it right at our local liquor store. But um, it's it's got a pretty cool flavor to it. The one that I have isn't spiced, but I don't mind regular rum. But it still has a nice little flavor to it. So I would definitely say buy some bottles of that if you can. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And like, you've been on cruises before, right? Yeah, I've been on a few of them. So is it just me? Or does it seem like the islands know how to make the rum. I think the islands know how to make the rum, man. Okay. <laughs> so, because like, yeah, I could get behind that for sure. So, uh, what's what's your beer, or what's the thing that you were gonna finish up on? Um. So it's the Fire Rock Pale Ale. Um. Again, you get this from Kona Brewing Company. Savor the smooth roasted flavor of Fire Rock. Bright and lively, like the glowing lava that flows down Kaluka? Kaluka? K-I-A... K-I-L-A... E-A... <laughs> yeah, I'm not we... sure how to pronounce that one. Uh, to hit the ocean's crushing waves. Racing Hawaii... Yeah, we put her in all those words. It's all right. Yeah. So basically, where this is... Um, it's the southern point of the big island of Hawaii. It's punctured by two active volcanoes. Um, eruptions from the east rift zone of this area keep expanding this like peninsula or this island out because you know when lava hits water, lava cools, lava make ground. And so 
it's kind of got like uh, an inspiration from that. And it looks like where this is at, it's brewed on one of the volcanoes from, or it takes like hops from there or something. It's kind of a nice little interestingness. So. Hmm. And they would recommend uh, getting into some like bitterness here. It's got 35 IBUs, 5.8 alcohol by volume. Um, but it recommends to pair this with a variety of foods such as barbecue or nachos and pizza. So this would probably be like a good uh, if you were in Hawaii, like a good day drinker beer. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it might be too heavy for a day drinker though. I don't know. We'll try it out. So I think we missed, uh, if you're on vacation, who cares? Oh, yeah. Like, I, I've i seen realtor shows. Bro, I cannot afford Hawaii. Like, I know this. Like, I will have to, <laughs> I will have to sell my organs on the black market for a down payment. So. Yeah, I've seen those shows too. Like a nine hundred square foot place is like three hundred thousand. Yeah, yeah. No, thank you. Yeah, but I'm not paying three hundred thousand dollars for a nine hundred okay. square foot house. So I think, I think we uh, we have missed out on one of the main things of Hawaii, or we haven't even talked about it yet, is the uh, the luau. Okay. You know, yeah. uh, you know where they have the pig roast. That's true. So, so like luau's are are a huge ceremonial thing anyway. But internet is being stupid. Yeah. So here's what I'm gonna do. Stop here. I'll get this shit edited, and we'll just splice it again, like I I have been doing. All right, we are back for what the third or fourth time of this garbage stuff. You know, I've got a lot of fingers, but I still can't count how many times this has screwed us today. Yeah, so Hawaii, you suck. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but to the, all the foodies and the BDSM community that's listening to this, oh my god, I, we are sorry. Yep. We're going to finish this damn thing, and then we'll move on to the next one and hope that we don't have the same problems. Or uh, we might be doing it this way for, for a little bit longer until we can figure out what the hell to do. Yeah, and who knows, like, we might become some of them YouTube channels where you get, like, a 10-minute video, and then it's broken up by, like, 10 ads, and you're like, what the fuck is this? Man, if we get ads, that'd be great. Not really, but, I mean, it'd be great to get some money coming from it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but anyway, so Hawaii, I think when the Meat Viking decides to put all this stuff together and figures out what it is, um, you know, we talked a lot about the poke. We talked a lot about the um, the the, uh, the beer. There's some rum in there, uh, but the thing that we were getting into before all this crap started happening was the luau. <laughs> so, um, a little bit of a history lesson. You know, the the luau basically was used for some type of celebration. You know, whether it was uh, an anniversary or whether it was like a celebration of a war victory or any type of significant life event, they would definitely throw out a luau. And uh, the, uh, the original name for it was called the Aha Ani, which I probably butchered the hell out of that, but it basically just meant gathering meal. So a luau was essentially something that is feasting on, on the traditional cuisine of Hawaii and um, they have all the entertainment, like fire breathers. You have the um, the hula girls, and then you know any type of other drums or anything else with with the music. So, have have you ever been to a luau before? Mm -mm. I've also never been to Hawaii though. So yeah, same. So You're, you've uh, been to a luau before Hawaii? Like I, I've. You know, whatever would be a luau. If you want to consider a pig roast a luau, then sure. Oh yeah, then yeah. If going by those terms, yeah. But no, the pig roast I've been to is like 
garage band and like a bunch of rednecks you know like like that pig roast is not not an actual pig roast that's some dude's old keg and uh like you can you can still taste all the budweiser in that <laughs> Well, with the traditional pig roast that's in Hawaii, um, you know, it has a bunch of different stuff in it. But pigs definitely centered the the main dish of that. Uh, and essentially what they do is they, just, they, they have a stove that they uh, make underground and they bury it. And they wrap it up in the leaves and let it sit for like 24 hours. And then they dig it up and carve it all off. And you got yourself a fresh pig that's juicy and ready to eat. Mm. there is something too about like anybody who's ever been to like a pig roast even if it's the kind that i've been to or an actual luau but that pork just hits different i know right so that's like pork is like the pork that you can cook every day but like luau pork is like your grandma's secret recipe pork that nobody can re recreate <laughs> true <laughs> so well dropping some hard facts there yeah um there's a lot of other things that apparently with it too from what i'm reading from what i'm i'm seeing in my research is that there's a uh, pineapple there's bananas uh sweet potatoes fish uh so I find that to be kind of cool that it's just not centered around the pig, although the pig is the main thing, but they have a lot of other things, coconuts, you know? Mm -hmm. And the, the funny thing that I read, and it's not really funny, but it's kind of like the, the, the Guinness Book of World Records deal. The largest luau was in 1847. And this dude hosted a feast for over a thousand people. And he had 271 pigs just for that luau. Wow. I know, right? And he had almost 500 freaking gourds filled with poi and almost 3,200 uh, saltwater fish. Oof. I know. That, like, that's a party. Yeah. So the king who, who did it, he was known as the Merry Monarch and hosted this large luau for his 50th birthday. See, that's just somebody who, like, everybody wants to be friends with. Yeah, because that dude's going to feed you and your family and everyone else. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. If you're bad at making friends but good at cooking, you can probably find a way to make some friends. Yeah. So, I, I this was basically stayed until the 1960s, and that's when tourism kind of sprouted more into Hawaii, and they kind of turned in the hey, instead of it being like, I'm going to launch a canoe or we're celebrating an anniversary or something, we're going to do a luau, but it's going to be kind of for tourists. Right. You know, it's going to be an attraction for tourists. So, yeah, we're going to we're gonna have basically one a day for all the people that are coming in and can experience that type of thing, and then they make money off of it now. Yeah. And I was kind of looking up some prices for luau's, and uh, the average cost that one of those places is going to run you is fairly reasonable you're looking at 90 to 100 dollars at most spots that i saw and you know you're getting essentially dinner and a show so an entire night of entertainment for you and like a couple people for a reasonable amount per head yeah i mean you figure if you go for a, a fancy dinner I mm -hmm. mean, you're about the same price, you know? Yeah. I mean, uh, <laughs> when I was in Chicago, we were going to go to this one place, and we looked at the menu, and it was like $150 for just a uh, a normal like one-person main course, and I'm 90% sure that didn't place didn't have dinner in a show. <laughs> so, just uh, some reference there. But, I mean, are those things all you can eat? Luau's? Yeah. You know, I didn't see that they weren't. 
I, I kind of feel like they'd have to be. Yeah. You know what? If I mean a pig for one, like if you get yourself one of them big ass pigs, mm-hmm. and I don't know how they range in Hawaii, but I can only assume that they're gonna be a decent amount or a decent size. Yeah. Like, dude, you even get a hundred people together, that's still a lot of meat per per person. Mm-hmm. So I I would think that they would have to be an all you can eat thing, so I can go back and get seconds. Yeah, man. I mean, let's see if I can google something here put the old google machine up to work well let's hope that we don't have to use a safe word because of this well. <laughs> yeah so the majority of hawaiian luau's on maui offer all you can eat hawaiian dinner with free drinks beer wine and tropical cocktails dude for 100 bucks ish yep man someone's getting lit while they're drinking Oh, yeah. they're, uh, they're eating some food, man. Yep. Yeah. Like, getting very drunk on Hawaii off some blue Hawaiians and some good food? Oh, yeah. <laughs> if anything, you can just puke on the beach. You'll be all right. <laughs> go, go feed the uh, filter feeders in the ocean, why don't you? I mean, at that point, you're kind of cutting out the middleman for them, aren't you? Mm-hmm. Right? Like... You're the one that's chewing it and kind of digesting it and then puking it up to the sea, yep, and then baby, they're just going to eat it. Like, yep, Go baby bird some turtle. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, what was the thing that you were talking about with pineapples? I think you, mm. you're gonna, you found some stuff on pineapples, right? Yeah. I actually used that tab that I had open on pineapples to... Uh... Google the luau, so that's my bad, everybody. Um, but like a lot of people, I think when they think of pineapple, they also think of Hawaii. Um, because at one point, all of the world's cannot can pineapples came from Hawaii. I don't think that's the case anymore. Um, but I read somewhere. Because, you know, if you're going to the grocery store to buy a pineapple, chances are it's a uh, dull pineapple. Yeah. And... There's got to be another state now that's making all those pineapples. Like, you would think California or something would have that. Right. Or even Florida, you know, like having that tropical-style weather. Mm -hmm. But I didn't even realize that if it was in canned, form that it was definitely coming from Hawaii at some point, you know? There was something that was about how much production used to come out of there in Hawaii because apparently it looks like it might have shut down? No. One thing that they have apparently, because I can't find like big numbers in my looking about how much they produce through here. Yeah. Um, But you can visit the Dole Plantation and it's like eight to nine dollars a ticket um for adults so that's kind of cool but one thing i saw is that um in 2008 dole's plantation giant pineapple garden maze was declared the world's largest maze uh that's awesome the maze itself stretches over three acres includes nearly two and one half miles of path crafted from fourteen thousand colorful Hawaiian plants. So you get to walk through the floor of the island and seek out eight secret stations to lead you closer to the mystery at the heart of this larger than life labyrinth. Um, one and only a handful of permanent botanical mazes in America. For enhanced maze experience, you can actually download an app and uh, track your time and the maze stations that you found while you're doing that. Dude, you imagine going to a maze just with pineapples? Well, like, it, it's way more than that, too. It's an actual, like, you know, like, you ever watch a, uh, some film that takes place in London, and they're always at those giant mansions, and they always have a a garden maze? Yeah. So I think it's called the Pineapple Garden Maze, because in the center of this garden maze is a giant pineapple. That's awesome. Like, you know... <laughs> You can see it from the sky, but 
looks like most of the garden maze, like I mentioned, is crafted from over 14,000 colorful Hawaiian plants. Gotcha. So, like, just super colorful. I can't, like, see inside the garden maze, but I get, like, the, uh, you know, the movie shot view from the top. I wonder, because of the dull plantation, like, I wonder if it had the same style of workers like the cotton plantations do. Like, when we start talking about South Carolina, North Carolina coming up, mm -hmm. like, I wonder if it's going to be the same type of trade. Right. <laughs> I, uh, I hope yeah. not. Yeah, well, I mean, Hawaii wasn't really a state until, what, 40-something? That's true. So, I mean... I don't know. I don't know what was really back there, but what I did find out, though, is that pineapples aren't native to Hawaii. Correct. Which, they can be traced, apparently, back uh, to South America. And oh, wow. actually, it came from a Spanish ship. Hmm. And it was named the Don Francisco de Palomarin. Hmm. So, I guess the stories say that the, the Spanish, that ship had a shipwreck. And they brought the first pineapples to the Big Island, and it was around the 1500s. So, that's pretty dope. Yeah, can you imagine just like being like, "Hey, I got all these things. Ah, oh, crap, our boat sank, but let's just let's just put it all over here, and then we'll plant them, and uh, you know, make a big ass industry out of it." Yeah, and you know, like, there's a lot less nice islands out there than to land on an island that's part of Hawaii. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah, like, remember uh, a couple of years ago, there was that one guy who thought it'd be a really fun idea to try and contact a village of people that have never really been contacted before, and that <laughs> ended super terribly for him? Yeah. <laughs> I definitely remember that. Yeah. But I didn't even, man, I didn't even realize that there was a plantation out there, though. Especially it was Dole. You know, mm -hmm. and those dudes were freaking doing a lot of pineapple canning. It's very true. So I think if I ever go to Hawaii, that's probably one of those touristy things that I would want to see, though. Yeah, and like it was super cheap too. It, I think it was eight dollars and twenty five cents a ticket. Oh man, I think if you're going to Hawaii, you know you're spending a shit ton of money anyway, because Hawaii is expensive. I'll give you an, an idea of how expensive it is for some of you who may not know. I uh, used to work with this contractor who um, was stationed in Hawaii for a long time ago. And one day we were talking about uh, subway subs. And I was like, man, I could really use a $5 foot long. And he's like, you know, that's not $5 everywhere. And I was like, what you mean? It's a $5 foot long. He's like, when I was in Hawaii, they were $14 for the foot long. And I was like, fuck that. <laughs> $14 foot long does not sound near as good. Yeah, five dollar foot long. That's the whole point of it. Mm hmm But I guess if you're if you're talking about, you know, remote areas, because Alaska would be the same way. Oh right? yeah. Oh you yeah. Know, Fourteen dollar foot long, dude. I'd rather just have some freaking shrimp. It'd be a lot cheaper. Right. Now like what point <laughs> for the subway in like Alaska is it like, yeah, man, we'll do a caribou club sandwich instead of like a ham sandwich i don't know you have a better chance of doing a ham sandwich in hawaii because of all the pigs right right so like the ham sandwich should be cheaper in hawaii but 14 dollars in alaska and if alaska ever does like a caribou club mount that shit should be 14 dollars everywhere else except for alaska where you can only get the caribou yeah so <laughs> that's funny I'm like 99% sure that's how economics works, but, you know, I'm not a very smart man. Well, um, we got anything else about Hawaii that you want to talk about? Not that I can think of, to be honest. Yeah, I think we've think actually, you know, outside of edit, post edit, edit, post edit, edit, hope to God that didn't get corrupted, file edit. I think that we, uh, I think we've done our best to cover Hawaii in the most um, legitimate way possible. Yeah, so all the people listening now, if you're watching on YouTube or if you're listening on 
any of the uh the streaming services dude this is a whacked out episode and we apologize but we'll get back to it for the yeah. next one <laughs> can i get a we're sorry yeah <laughs> we're sorry but uh well foodies the bdsm community here uh i am professor Porcoin, and we are going to be signing off for hawaii finally and i'm here with the, the awesome co-host the meat viking sign off and we will see you for the next date of 